You probably know this chord. A major bar chord playing G, but do you know the actual letters in this shape? G, D, G, B, D, and G. You'll notice while I'm playing six strings, there are only three letters in there, G, B, and D. Why is that? Let's look at what those notes are in relation to our roots scale. G, the starting note, is one. G, A, B is three. G, A, B, C, D is five. What's the significance of one, three, five? Well, when you play a roots one, three, five, you're playing that roots major chord. If I play G's one, three, five, G, B, D, that's G major. If I play D's one, three, five, D, F sharp, A, that's D major. So with that in mind, what are the numbers inside this bar chord. It would be one, five, one, three, five, one. The beauty of the numbers is as we move, the letters change, but the numbers do not. If I play A major, A, E, A, C sharp, E, A, totally different notes, but the numbers are still one, five, one, three, five, one of our new root. Stay tuned to see why this is valuable. Now that I know the full note order of this standard bar chord is 1, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1, I'm going to start breaking it up into smaller pieces. A lot of these shapes you probably already know, but now you'll know why they work. How about the top three strings only? That works because this is 3, 5, 1, the full chord. How about the DGB strings, first chord of the verse of Crazy Train? That works because this is 1, 3, 5, the full chord. How about this E chord looking shape? 5, 1, 3, the full chord again. People like to move this around. But if I play these three, this is not the full chord. This is just 1, 5, 1, also known as a power chord. I can put the third in there. There's only one on the G string. Or maybe I can play the middle four strings. People like to play this because it's full sounding, but easier than barring with muting the E string. Or I can just mess around. How about 1, 3, 5 with the open high E string? Move it around. Now I'm going to start adding new notes. I'm going to do this on G today. We know the standard note order for this bar chord is 1, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1, and we've split it up into smaller pieces like these. The next step is to add nearby notes for extra color. Easiest way to do this is pick a string like the high E string, add the note to the right from the scale. This is 1, so I know to the right is 2, just like the scale. Throw that into a chord. I guarantee you've heard these sounds. How about the B string? That's five. To the right would be six. Put that into a chord. The G string is three. To the right would be four. Not going to work all the time, but very popular in classic rock. I'm sure you've heard Little Wing. D string is another one to two, just like the high E string. This gives us our super power chord. A string is five to six, just like the B string five to six. This gives us our blue shuffle. And that E string is not one to two again. Memorize all of these and tomorrow we'll mess around. With everything we've talked about, I'm gonna start messing around. Here's our basic bar chord. I'm gonna start with the top three strings, third, fifth, root, adding in notes to the right. How about one to two in the chord? Five to six in the chord. Three to four in the chord. Top two strings keep the G string. Outer strings keep the B string. All three of them. At that point, we're basically playing a different chord, that's for a separate video. Let's try this shape, one, three, five. Move the outer strings only, keep the G string. I played this earlier with all the open strings. Sounds super cool. Let's try this with the full bar chord. One to two on the D string, three to four on the G string. Tricky fingering, but really cool, right? Again, I can do this easily because I know the note order, one, five, one, three, five, one, and I'm simply adding in notes from the scale to the right. Now that we're getting more comfortable with this 151351 bar chord shape, instead of using it like a chord, we're gonna use it as a roadmap for our leads. Easiest way to get started is with these two note groupings like this. People call these double stops or dyads, up to you, but this is the approach. Top two strings, fifth and root first, move them both to the right to their notes, so this. Next two strings, third and fifth, to the right. Next two, root and third, to the right. Next to fifth and root, just like the top, to the right. Next to root and fifth, to the right. Power chords, basically. All of them. I'll run them up and then down. Already so colorful, so musical, so useful. Yesterday we started using this 151351 bar chord shape as a roadmap for our leads, and we did that by using these two string groupings like these. 
Let's expand on this by instead of using two strings next to each other, let's just skip a string. So instead of B string, high E string, G string, and high E string, like this. Let's run that all the way down. Next. 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 The cool thing about this is you get different intervals. Like these are sixths, fifths, sixths, octave. You can think about that, but it's always more important to know the notes under your fingers, like one to two, three to four. Let's start experimenting. Let's mix what we did yesterday with what we're doing right now. Two strings next to each other, then skip. We get this like counter melody. Let's run that all the way down and with a chord. Sounds cool and I'm just messing around. We've been using this 151351 one, bar chord shape as a roadmap for our leads, and we're gonna continue doing that by building a scale off of the shape. Step one, take your pointer finger, run every note of that chord with just that finger. One, five, one, three, five, one. Then simply add the note to the right exactly like we've been doing. One, two, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Run it like a scale. You might say, why can't I just play the full major scale? That defeats the purpose because the scale is coming from the chord, meaning the notes starting on each string are always chord tones. What's so important about a chord tone? Well, if you're playing over a chord like this, guess what notes are gonna sound perfect over this chord? The notes that are in the chord, also known as chord tones. So if I do this, I can end here knowing that it's a chord tone, and if you've been paying attention, I know it's the fifth, the third, the fifth, root. Practice this, then we'll mess around. Using the custom scale from yesterday, I'm going to mess around. I don't expect everyone to follow or even enjoy these ideas. I instead want you to use my approach and do your own thing. Let's start with these shapes. Let's come down one, up the next, all the way down. Pretty cool. What about the string skip version? Same thing, down one, up the next. Look at that, a bunch of fifths. Maybe there are a bunch of fifths in here. There's a bunch, more, more. Maybe get a lick out of this. Maybe a simple riff. What about stacked fourths? Here's one, there's another, and another, and another. Right, maybe I play them like chords. Maybe like a lead. I'm a fan of these sounds. We've gotten a lot of material out of this 151351 bar chord shape by simply adding the notes to the right. Today, we're gonna to add the notes to the left with just one string, the high E string. This note is the root, what is to the left? A half step to seven. Seven is significant because we haven't played it yet and it turns the sound into major seven. Simply do this, take some of your small shapes, how about this one, one, three, five, change the fingering, add that note in. That's one, three, five, seven, major seven chord. How about this one, five, one, three, change your fingering, add that note in. You might have to mute some strings if you're strumming. How about this one, one, five, three, change the fingering, add that note in, the top seven. Cool shape, I'm gonna do this with the open B string and just move it around. different sound. Yesterday we took our standard bar chord shape and started adding notes to the left and we found a seventh on the high E string giving us the ability to play major seven like this or like this. Now there's something important about big chords like this. If you're playing in a genre where guitar is the main instrument you can play these shapes as big as you want but if you're playing in a genre where guitar is not the main instrument like R&B, funk, gospel, modern pop, modern hip-hop it's very common to leave notes out of this chord so you don't step on the territory of other instruments. In particular the root because that note is probably being played somewhere else. So instead of playing this shape, one, three, five, seven, we'll leave the root out and only play three, five, seven. Treasure by Bruno Mars is the best example of this. Not in this key, but these are the movements. The root is in none of those chords because the bass is playing it here. But together, still getting the chord, but with a cleaner sound. Using this 151351 bar chord shape, we've been taking this high root and moving it back a fret to seven. But there are multiple roots we can move back a fret. 
1 to 7, or 1 to 7, or 1 to 7. We can use any of these 7s to create major 7 chords, like this. 1, 3, 5, take my 1, move it back a fret to 7, 3, 5, play the root down here. Very common shape. Or we can not play the root at all and let our bass player do that, like we talked about yesterday. Side note, this looks a lot like this minor chord, doesn't it? Hmm. For a separate video. The main thing I would remember when you're playing major sevens is where the root is in relation to the seven. This shape, one, three, five, seven, my root is lower than the seven. But this shape, seven, three, five, one, my one is higher than the seven. Without getting into the details, most people consider this shape to be more palatable than this shape with the one on top, as it's a bit crunchier. Personally, I like to use the crunchy shapes in passing like this. We're going to continue adding notes to the left of this standard bar chord with one note in particular, the third, of which there's only one in this chord on the G string. What note is to the left of three in the major scale? It would be the two back a whole step. So if this is three, this is two. The nice thing about this two is we can hammer on to the three, a classic sound. Let's do this hammer on in all of the small shapes we've discovered. How about this? Three, five, one, turn it into two, five, one, hammer on to three. How about this? One, three, five, turn into one, two, five, hammer on to three. Five, one, three, turn into five, one, two, hammer on to three. We can even grab a high root or something. Or how about a seven? Pretty nice. What about this? One, five, three, turn into one, five, two, basically a super power chord, hammer on to three. How about grab that high seven? Let's move this around. As we've been taking the notes of our standard bar chord and moving them to the left, we've discovered all of the roots move to the left one fret to seven. Our third, there's only one, moves to the left two frets to two. We are doing some hammer-ons yesterday. What about the other notes, the fives? They are going to move to the left two frets to four, just like they would in the major scale. Let's only look at the B string today because it's crazy popular. Watch this. One, three, five chord shape, turn into one, three, four. This is really popular because you can play three and four at the same time, a sound people really like. If I move this up to B right here, I'm sure you've heard this. That again is four, three, one of B in this case. In fact, this exact chord, one, one, three, four. I'm sure you've heard this. Again, major plus the four, very popular in classic rock. Yesterday we took our standard bar chord and moved the fifth on the B string back a whole step to four, giving us some cool sounds. We're gonna do the same thing with the fifth on the A string, also back a whole step to four, but this one's a little different. Here's a standard chord, five, one, three, five. Take the fifth, move it back to four, and we get this. You might naturally say that's A major, four, one, three, five, but that's not how your ears are hearing it. That four in the bass dominates the sound so much where it now sounds like the root of a new chord. D in this case. So this chord is actually one, five, seven, two of D. So when we do the switch, it's really A to D, but we're not moving the chord, we're only moving the root, keeping the A on top. There's a band called Joyce Manor with a song called 18. They do exactly this. A chord on top to start, but then later they play the same chord with D in the bass much more modern and rich way to play that simple change. Now that we're comfortable with this standard bar chord and all of the nearby notes, we're going to make one modification that turns this chord into a different but very important sound. Here's our root. Of course, to the left is seven like it is, but back one more fret is flat seven. What is the sound with major with flat seven instead of normal seven? A sound known as dominant seventh. If you've ever seen a chord that's a letter and then seven, that is what this is. And the core ingredient is flat seven, which is always to the left, two frets from a root. One flat seven, one flat seven, one flat seven. In fact, if you play this standard A chord, you ever wonder why you lift your pinky and it becomes A7, that's what you're doing. The pinky down is the root. And when you lift it, you're playing two frets back under the bar. Here's what it sounds like in a lead. So a lot of different approaches to this sound, but all you have to remember is major with flat seven. Now that we're talking major with flat seven, otherwise known as dominant seven, let's get some chords. Standard major, one, three, five, one. Let's take our root, move it back two frets to flat seven. There's our chord. Do we need the root? Nope, bass player's probably playing it. Three, five, flat seven will do. 
about this? One, three, five, take one, turn into flat, seven, three, five. If we need a root, we've got one down here on the E string or the other high E string. Now, all of that is great, but there's one more way to find this note. We know if we're on one, we go back two frets to flat seven. But watch this. On five, if we're playing five, go up a whole step to six, but go up one more fret to flat seven. That's the same note. One to flat seven or five up three frets to the same flat seven. We can do this. One, three, five, one, three, flat seven. Little melodies. This is a super valuable location, so memorize this and tomorrow we'll mess around. Now that we know two locations to find flat seven, back a whole set from any root, or up three frets from any five, let's mess around. What about this shape? One, three, five, a chord shape, little melody on top. Bum, 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 five, six, flat seven. Very common, but I can also do this. Five, six, flat seven. Getting these two at the same time. What about this shape? One, three, four, we did that the other day. Guess what, flat seven is right underneath the four. Have you ever heard Summer Song by Satriani? That's what this is, just in harmonic version. Let's put the root in the bottom, pretty cool. Let's put the flat seven in the bottom. Kinda tough to play, but pretty cool. Let's go back and forth from major to this thing. Maybe with some open strings. Maybe with a pattern. So easy to mess around when you know the notes. I'm gonna mess around with some dominant seventh licks inside of this bar chord. Here's your core shape. One, three, five, flat seven, up three frets from that five. If you know this is flat seven, you can bend it up a whole step, two frets to a root. You can do this. Classic figure. You can also start on flat seven because it's back two frets from this root. You can also do this. And on six, bend up half step to flat seven. Another classic figure. How about after that bend? Grab the one on top, or grab both the one and the two on top. What about this? Little shape, one, three, five, down six, three, flat seven. Kind of kooky sounding, it's a little reverse staircase kind of thing. Kind of stupid, but cool at the same time. Again, if you know the notes, it is so easy to come up with this stuff. With our dominant seventh leads inside of this bar chord, it's important to note that certain genres will approach the sound differently by featuring certain notes. So if you think of a rock player like Joe Satriani or a jam band like Grateful Dead, they like to do this sort of thing. One, three, five, standard major, plus flat seven, of course, but they'll also play a lot of four. One, three, four, five, flat seven. Or one, three, four, five, flat seven, like we did the other day. Listen to this lick. I'm playing a ton of this four right there. One, three, four, five, flat, seven, four, one, even this little bend. That's me playing three up to four and back. When we play a lot of this four, you're turning the chord into kind of a suspended chord, which is a little softer sounding than normal dominant. Here's a longer passage. So remember, if you like the sound, think major with flat seven plus the four. Yesterday we talked about dominant seventh leads plus the four giving us a smooth suspended sound. Rock players like to use this, but blues players like to do something a little bit different. Standard dominant seventh, one, three, five, flat seven, maybe with six as well. But watch this extra note. What am I doing right there? Instead of playing three, I'm always playing the half step back from three into three every time. What is this note? This is flat three. So when you do this, it's almost like you're playing minor just for a moment. You could hammer on into the three, slide, bending is very popular. And you can do this to any third in any register all the time. Watch this, one, two, three up top. Instead of playing three, back a half step first and then bend into it. Come down. So remember, dominant seventh plus flat three into normal three. With our dominant seventh leads inside of this bar chord, yesterday we added a single passing tone, the flat three into the normal three, giving us a blues flavor. But we can do this passing tone idea into any note if we want. One, three, five. There's five, passing tone into five, flat five, five. Here's one, passing tone into one. One and five. One, three, and five. 
the more passing tones you add, it starts to sound like you're playing a fancy scale, but you're not. You're just playing dominant seventh with some passing tones. What about six? It's right there. One, three, five, flat seven, passing into six. Very common sound. You can slide into these notes, hammer on, or bend. Once your ears get used to the sound, you'll get this sort of fancier blues sound or a very light jazz sound. Yesterday, we were adding half-step passing tones into our dominant seventh ideas, like this. Now you'll notice all of those passing tones always move up a fret into the strong notes. Can we move down a fret into the strong notes? So for example, if this is five, can I start ahead of it and then resolve back? You can, but there's something more popular. If this is your target note, start ahead of it, then behind it, and then hit it like this. Here's five, start ahead of it, behind it, and then hit it. This is called chromatic enclosure. I just call it surrounding the note. Watch this. Five, flat seven, one, three. Surround the one. Surround the one and three. Surround the five, one, and three. This gives you this out sound without having to think about anything out. You're just targeting your chord tones by playing the notes around it. Let me do a longer passage. Pretty fancy. Continuing with our standard bar chord, it's time to transition over to minor. Now, of course, I can just take the third and flat it, but we're going to do something different because we've technically already been playing minor. Earlier on, we took our bar chord and highlighted all of the chord tones with one finger. One, five, one, three, five, one. And then we added all of the notes to the right, giving us this little two-note custom scale. One to two, five to six, one to two, three to four, five to six, one to two. But what happens if we look at all of those notes to the right as a chord? So this, that... That, 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 and that. All at the same time, we get this minor chord up a whole set from the major chord that we've been playing. How is this working? Because this chord is kind of the one chord of our key, and when you take all of the notes of a one chord, move them to the right, you get the notes of a two chord, and two chords are minor, a major, the minor in this case. So when you're playing this little custom scale, all of the notes to the left are chord tones of this, all of the notes to the right are chord tones of this. Visualize this, and we'll experiment. In yesterday's short, we discovered our two-note custom scale that sounded like this was actually just the chord tones of this major chord and this minor chord back to back. So the next step is to play the same thing but with small chord voicings. Watch this. 5-1-3 of A major, move everything to the right, and we get 5-1-3 of B minor. The same order of notes, but notice it looks different because the third is flat because we're playing minor. How about this? 1-3-5, move everything to the right, 1-3-5 of B minor. Again, the third is flat. How about this? 3-5-1, move everything to the right, 3-5-1 of B minor with the flat third again. When you run them in sequence like this, A, B minor, A, B minor, A, B minor, it's a concept called triad pairs, and it is one of the most useful concepts for chord melodies, improvising leads, creating harmonies, and really just being comfortable moving around chord shapes. Yesterday we talked about the concept of triad pairs, which is when you take small chord shapes like these and apply them to two chords next to each other, like A major, B minor. The cool thing about them is while the sound and the chord shape is different, the note order is always the same. Like this is 3-5-1 of A, this is 3-5-1 of B minor, of course with a flat 3. You can almost run them like a scale. My favorite way to practice these is to focus on the top note of the chord, because that's usually the note you're hearing as your melody. So play a simple little melody, how about this, and figure out what would the chords be underneath each of those notes. If I play this note, the chord is this. If I play this one, that's the chord. This one, that's the chord. This one. And run it like that. Here's the melody. Here it is with the chord. Here's another one with the chords super melodic and ultra valuable. As we're getting more comfortable with the concept of triad pairs, these little chords with melodies on top, the next step is to start combining them with simple single note melodies. My favorite way to do it is like this. Play a tiny little figure from that two note per string scale we've been playing like this. Play it once and end on one of the chords, A major. Play it again and end on the other chord, B minor, like this. A major. Here's another one. B minor, A major. You 
don't even necessarily have to play the full chords, just enough notes to get the sound out, like this. That's ending on just one and three of A, or one and three of B minor. By forcing yourself to land on these different chords, you're training your ears and your intuition to target chord tones, which is how people solo over changes. With our simple melodies, plus these triad pairs, it's time to start improvising over these chords, A major and B minor. Of course, we can find a backing track or make a loop out of it, but I would try this instead. Have the chords changing in time in your head only and force yourself to land on those chord tones when they change. If you do this properly, you can actually hear the chords shifting purely from your note choice in the lead. So I'll play this, A, two, three, four, B minor, two, three, back to A. Here's a mindset that I call chord verse chord. We've been playing over this A major, B minor by targeting chord tones. So for example, we see this note as a chord tone of A, so we can easily play it, but it's not a chord tone of B minor, so maybe we'll use it in passing. But instead of just looking at this as chord tone or non-chord tone, look at what that note literally is over one chord versus the other. So for example, we see this note as the third of A, but what is it of B minor? It's the second of B minor. How do I know that? Because this is B, the root, and this note is a whole step up, or one to two. By knowing the kind of dual functionality of this note, it's training my ears and my eyes to know how that note is gonna function over any chord. For example, I might wanna play the two of B minor. It's a cool sounding note, and I know exactly where it is. Eventually, you're gonna do this with a bunch of chords. Like, I see this note as the third of A, the second of B, the sixth of E, the root of C sharp, the seventh of D, the fourth of G sharp, and the fifth of F sharp. With our B minor bar chord, it's time to start playing the most common scale on top of this minor pentatonic starting off the same root. Bunch of names for this figure, none of them matter. What does matter are the letters and numbers under your fingers. Let's do the letters. B, D, E, F sharp, A, B, D, E, F sharp, A, B, and D. While you'll notice I played a bunch of notes, I only played five different letters, hence the name pentatonic, by the way. What I'm really doing is playing B, D, E, F sharp, A, and then doing it again. B, D, E, F sharp, A, and then almost doing it again, B and D. So this isn't one scale, it's actually multiple smaller pieces played back to back. This piece right here, B, D, E, F sharp, A, that's the full scale. I can take that, plant it around the fretboard, as long as I'm starting on B and modifying my fingering if I have to, B. much better way to cover the fretboard with this sound. Over this B minor bar chord, we were playing this classic minor pentatonic. Yesterday we went over all of the letters, now let's do the numbers. B is one, D is flat three, E is four, F sharp is five, A is flat seven, and then we just repeat. So one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, again. One, flat three, four, five, flat seven, again, one and flat three. This isn't just for B minor, this is for every minor pentatonic. If I played here on A, A is one, flat three, four, five, flat seven. G's one, flat three, four, five, flat seven. You'll also notice inside of this scale is one, one flat three and five, or the entire chord that we're playing over. Not only is the entire chord in this scale, it's the majority of the scale. Three of the five notes are chord tones, and the other two notes, four and flat seven, are pretty smooth. This is why this sound is so easy to play over. You're basically just playing the chord plus two other smooth notes. Memorize these numbers and we'll start messing around. Now that we know minor pentatonic is just one, flat three, four, five, and flat seven, let's start targeting chord tones, which again is the majority of this sound. Let's use this figure, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, and one. This one's nice because all of the notes on this side, flat three, five, one, all chord tones, which you should know, it's just the top three strings of the corresponding bar chord. So if we're soloing over this bar chord, this is why I can play this and have it sound finished because I'm landing on flat three, a chord tone. But if I end on four, a non-chord tone, most people would say that that doesn't sound finished until I eventually move to a chord tone. What about the bending, G string bend? That sounds good because I'm bending up to five, a chord tone. B string bend, 
That sounds good because I'm bending up to one, a chord tone. Even this lick, all chord tones. There's only two notes, five, five, one, five, one. So if you think like this, I promise you'll have more control over your playing. Now that we're targeting chord tones of our small minor pentatonic figure, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, and one, it's time to start adding in some color notes. Let's start with the two. Very easy to find, always up a whole step from one. If this is our one, one, two, one, two, or one, two, different fingering. Now you might want to just throw it into the pentatonic like this. But the problem with that is you can't really hear that color because it's buried in the middle of all of the other notes. So instead, play fewer notes. How about just one, three, five? with the two, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, you can hear a little better. Or change the fingering, hold the notes together. Or even better, instead of one, two, three, flat three, play one, flat three, two. By falling down to it, you're featuring it even more. Change the fingering. Maybe end with a little chord with two on top. So when you're adding in these color notes, don't just throw them into a scale, make sure you're playing them in a way where you can really hear them. The next color note to add to this minor pentatonic is going to be flat five. A note you're all playing sounds like this. There are two locations for this note, upper fret from four, so one, flat three, four, flat five, or back a fret from five, one, flat three, four, five, flat five. So you have two locations for the same note in this figure. You can use it in passing like most people. I kind of like to jump to it though, like this. So I'm playing this flat three on top and jumping way down to flat five really brings it out. Or you can jump away from the flat five like this. So I'm actually playing one, flat three, five, flat five, like a chord maybe, then jumping way up here to two. Speaking of the two, let's play both of them. One, two, flat three, flat five, two. Then resolve to a chord tone. Really cool sounds. Again, I'm just playing minor pentatonic plus flat five and two, wild stuff. The final color note we'll add to the small pentatonic is going to be the seven, which is always located back a half step from your root. So if this is your root, seven. If this is your root, seven. If this is your root, seven. This note is cool because it's out of the key and implies another chord when you play it. So like this, kind of sounds like I'm doing this. Why is that? Because that note is the third of this F sharp seven chord, B minor's five chord. Kind of like Hotel California. When I play this note, I like to not play the root ever until I want it to sound finished, like this. One, right there. You can even take the pentatonic and just take both roots, move them back to seven, and never play the root until you want it to sound finished. Many people are going to call this harmonic minor. I kind of don't agree with that because that makes it sound like I'm doing something different. I'm not. I'm playing minor pentatonic and just tossing this note in. With our minor pentatonic plus these three color notes, let's start coming up with some ideas. Easiest way to do this is to take figures you're already playing and inject them with these color notes. I'm going to play this simple minor arpeggio, do it all the time. I'm going to throw in these notes. I see two right here and right there. Let's toss them in. One, flat three, five, flat seven, two, walk up the rest. Pretty cool. Or maybe this. Three, two at the end is pretty cool. What about flat five? There it is. Toss it in. This little two, flat five, five, one figure, little chord, sounds pretty cool. Almost looks like a dominant seventh with a four in it, doesn't it? Like we talked about a while ago. What about natural seven? I see one right there. Toss it in. That's three, seven, one, two, five. Very cool. A little longer. So don't try to learn these licks. Take your own ideas and inject them with these notes. Continuing with our two octave minor pentatonic plus our color notes, one of my favorite things to do is split the scale up into two halves, a left side and a right side, and come up with small three string chord shapes based on each side. So watch this. Top three strings. If I play only the left side, I get flat three, five, one, a little minor chord, but only the right side gives me four, flat seven, flat three, a nice kind of stacked fourth chord. Run it all the way down, the right side, left side, right side, left side. Right side, left side, right side. Use the top note as your melody guide. You can even add in some color notes like this. What is that? Two, I know it's there, throw it in. What is this? That's flat seven, two, and flat five. I know they're there, throw them in. 
So practice these and tomorrow we'll write a rhythm part using these small chord shapes. Using these small shapes, I'm gonna come up with something. Personally, the top note melody is always my guide throughout the entire process. Let's start with this chord right here. I hear this on top. Bum. Maybe I hear it going down. Bum, bum. What can I play right there? Well, I see this little chord. That sounds cool. I also know this little hammer on is there. Let's try that. I like that a little bit better. Bum, bum. Maybe this note can go down further. Bum, bum. Cool. What's a chord I can play right here? I see this little A chord, our triad pairs, right? Bum, bum, bum. I hear this note coming down, maybe to here, but I also know this color note of flat five is right there. Let's try that. Let's put a chord under you. Pretty cool, just looking for notes available. Naturally, I hear this note moving up. Bum, let's try that. Let's put a chord with it, how about just B minor? You see my process of always thinking about the top note makes things so much easier. We'll continue in the next couple days. I'm gonna finish the part that I came up with yesterday, those small little chord shapes, plus the top note melody as my guide. So, bum, 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 bum. Naturally, I hear this top note moving up. I'll just do a little hammer on from that chord. That's nice. Now the next melody I was hearing was this. Very simple B minor, four, flat three, two, flat three, nothing crazy. I was doing it with this chord. So five, flat seven, and then the melody. But I was also doing this, while the melody is moving down, the D string, middle string was moving up, flat seven, seven, one, with the bass note. Pretty cool, whole thing. Right, singing. Again, so easy for me to do because I know the notes in this area. Tomorrow we'll play it in time with a rhythm. Yesterday I finished the part that I was writing, that little chord melody, it sounded like this. It sounds nice like that, kind of free time, but it's also cool to change the context, which is exactly what I did. I started playing it more like a funk part, like this. Not only does that sound cool, but it's also giving me new ideas. Like I hear a different chord for the second ending. I was trying this E minor right here, let's try that. I also hear like a single note lead taking me back to the beginning. One of the licks we did the other day, B minor with a color note, works perfectly. Let's try that. Pretty cool. Yesterday I took my small chord melody and turned it into a funk strumming part. It sounded like this. I went ahead, added some parts, and made a full band arrangement. Sounds like this. As we wrap this series, let's take a look at some of the stuff we've done. We started with this A bar chord and learned that the notes were A, E, A, C sharp, E, and A, or more importantly, 1, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1 of A. By knowing that, it gave us a bunch of stuff to do, like create small chord shapes, add little notes to those shapes, even fancier ones. We even created a custom scale of the bar chord notes plus notes to the right took all of that and moved it to the right to a minor bar chord shape with the same order. One, five, one, three, five, one, just with flat three. We played the small chord shapes of both of them. Played some pentatonic with some color notes. Even wrote a funk tune. All of this was possible because we're thinking about the individual ingredients under our fingers. Too many guitar players and teachers ignore this, but I'm telling you right now, if you think about the notes under your fingers, how those notes function over the music, you will have control over your playing.